station of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. The starting pitching has been top-notch for the Tigers on this homestand. Anibal Sanchez, Doug Fister, Max Scherzer have all been outstanding. The Tigers rotation, 153 strikeouts second in the major leagues. And Justin Verlander will be on display here tonight as we welcome you to Comerica Park. Game two in this series featuring the Minnesota Twins and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, we are glad to have you with us. Game two in this series. Good start to the series with a victory last night. And really, Ron, when you look at the success the Tigers have had on this homestand, it all starts with that rotation. You know, they have a very good pitching staff, but it's a pitching staff that has a chance to be great. Uh, when you have a Verlander, you have a Scherzer and a Fister and a Sanchez, guys that can overpower you, but they can also finesse you with some outstanding off-speed pitches. Yeah, speaking of great, Justin Verlander in his last two starts has been really, really good, but in his last start, cut short a little bit with a thumb injury. You know, that fastball is finally starting to get up to about 95 to 97 miles an hour. As the weather starts to warm up, we'll see Justin Verlander start to get up to 100 miles an hour. He can simply overpower you with fastballs up, or he can overpower you with fastballs down. But he had to leave the last start. This was after only six innings with some kind of a thumb injury. But when he does have an, an awesome energy, inter, uh, <laughs> injury with that fastball, he can come back with that very good changeup and all speed pitches which Verlander will do here tonight if he does have some issues with that fastball. The fastball is the only issue he has as far as throwing, as far as the thumb is concerned. It's been a great April for Verlander. Hopefully that will continue here tonight. After a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios and join Mickey York. But coming up, boy, the big boys, they have been getting it done. Prince Fielder and Miguel Cabrera, they've combined for 51 RBIs so far this year. Tigers Twins, game two, next.
takes the field. So the Detroit Tigers, and we are ready for baseball here this evening, game two of the series. And the starting lineup for the Twins presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Eduardo Escobar leads it off. He'll play second base, followed by Joe Maurer and then Josh Willingham. Justin Morneau is at first base. Chris Parmley is in right. Trevor Plouffe at third. Arcia Ramirez and Florimone will round out the lineup for Minnesota. The Tiger starter is JV, and he is presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Hey, Verlander usually gets off to very sluggish starts in the month of April, but not so much this year. In five starts, two and two record with an ERA that is under two. 33 strikeouts in 32 in the third innings uh, so far this year for Justin Verlander. And on a 70 degree night, we are ready for baseball as Eduardo Escobar leads it off for the Twins and he looks at strike one. Turned out to be an unbelievable evening. It didn't look all that uh, pleasant this afternoon. No, Tark was on the field. Rain was falling here in downtown Detroit, but it is indeed a beautiful night. The 0 1 pitch is popped up. Left side of the infield. Johnny Peralta is under it and one gone. Let's take a look at the Tigers starting defense presented by Beaumont Health System. It's the defense has only made six errors this year. Only the errors on the Diamondbacks uh, in the National League have committed as few errors this year as the Tigers have. So they've clearly uh, been catching that baseball with consistency. Here is Joe Maurer batting in the two slot again in this one here today. Maurer has had trouble of late. He is 0 for his last 20, which is the longest hitless streak of his career. He was 0 for 4 in last night's game. And he looks at strike one. 92 on the early fastball from Justin Verlander. Mauer's great numbers against Justin Verlander in his career. If there was ever a guy uh, going through a rough stretch uh, that would want to see a particular pitcher, it would be Mauer against Verlander. No balls and two strikes. Joe Maurer comes in tonight, a 322 career hitter in the major leagues. Only one Minnesota twin has had a better career average, and that would be Rod Carew. 0 and 2 count. And here it is. Bouncing ball right side, right at Prince. Verlander covers, and there are two gone. Well, the month of April, Rod, typically has not been very good for Justin Verlander, but look at 2013. At the end of this year, he may uh, be off to his best season, if you judge it by the earned run average in 2006 through 2012 compared to 2013 this season. Strikeout per nine innings also up this year. And two quick outs here in this one tonight. Josh Willingham will stand in now for the Twins. This Tigers pitching staff has been on some kind of a roll. Jim Leland was asked before the game today if this is the best staff top to bottom starting wise that he's ever managed and he wouldn't go there because he just doesn't like to compare teams. But he said it's awfully good and it's certainly one of the best. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. I would think that really the only one that would compare would be that World Championship Florida Marlins team uh, when he was the skipper in 1997. Yeah, he, he brought that one up. He also brought up the one that had Drabeck and Smiley in Pittsburgh, which was a very good staff. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss, and that's about as snappy a first inning as you can have. A 1-2-3 first for Justin Verlander, his first strike out of the game.
ballpark and Austin Jackson getting set to lead things off Tiger starting lineup tonight presented by the Southeast Michigan four dealers Jackson Hunter and Cabrera your top three Prince cleaning up again tonight Victor Martinez the DH Andy Dirks had a big game last night he's out of the left Peralta Avila and Infante rounding out the Tigers starting lineup and they will face Vance Worley tonight he was an opening day starter this year back on uh, April 1st, but he's really struggled this season. He has not won a game for his new club in the ERA. It's 6 3 8, 16 strikeouts in 24 innings for the right hander, Worley. Jackson leads it off and takes strike one. Austin last night, one for four and batting 287. A couple of homers this year, 10 RBIs. Had a big three run shot a couple of nights ago against the Braves. That is it for strike two. 0 and 2. AJ now with a five game hitting streak. Done marvelous work at the top of this Tigers lineup. Hit 300 last year and continuing that this year. But there is strike three on the outer edge. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Twins starting defense brought to you by Tim Hortons. <laughs> Uh, you have Wilkin Ramirez making his first start in center field. Aaron Hicks, the very talented switch hitter for the Minnesota Twins, at least getting the start of this contest off. After a night off last night, here is Torrey Hunter. He is back in the two slot for Detroit. And he looks at strike one, so nothing but strikes out of the shoot here for Vance Worley. Torrey batting 375, which is good for second in the major leagues. Now the 0 1. That is a fair ball down the third baseline. Looks like extra bases for Torrey. He's on his way to second. He'll pull in with a double. Torrey Hunter has not gotten many hits this year uh, down the left field line. The majority of his hits. Have been the other way, but he is showing you that he still has uh, that lightning quick bat. If you try to sneak a fastball inside uh, to him, he turned on this heater from Worley. Every time Miguel Cabrera comes to the plate, he is hitting with runners in scoring position. At least it appears that way. Well, it's that way here tonight as he steps in after the eighth double of the year already for Torrey Hunter. Cabrera last night 0 for 2. And he grounds one foul back into the dugout. 0 and 1 on Miguel. Nine hits on the homestand, batting 367. Worley has given up a total of 20 runs this year. Ten of those runs have come against him in the very first inning. Well, the Tigers hoping to add to. His first inning woes. The 0 1 pitch. Driven to right field. Hit well. Harvey going back. He turns and that ball is out of here. It's gone. A line drive home run the other way. He looked like he hit that ball with his back foot off the ground. He and Chris Fielder are truly a dynamic duo. It's a fastball outside and the right foot was off the ground initially. He got it back down but that just gives you an idea of just how strong uh, Miguel Cabrera is and not only does he drive it in that direction but he hits it out of here. Oh. Remarkable. Unbelievable. Frank Thomas is the only other right hander that we used to witness that would hit with one foot off the ground. Meanwhile the Prince with a single to center field. Well, Cabrera and Hunter are able to combine here in the first inning. And when you look at the major league leaders and hits, there they are. Ron Gardenhire had glowing praise for Miguel Cabrera and Prince Fielder and Torrey Hunter for that matter after the game last night. Uh, just talking about how professional they are and how good a hitters they are and how very difficult it is for any starting pitcher to maneuver themselves through the lineup four times in a ball game. Every pitch so far in this game has been a strike. Worley is eight for eight. 
Here's Martinez, and he shoots one foul. Really needs to mix in a ball or two. Huh, no kidding. Three straight hits. Victor batting 198 was 0 for 4 last night. I think Ron Gardenhire said it best. He said, This Tigers offense will abuse you. Uh. And uh, that's probably the best way you can describe it. The 0 1 pitch. And that'll get into left field, the base hit. Worley struck out Jackson, but it's been nothing but base runners since. We told you about uh, Worley and uh, his first inning struggles this year. Well, you want to be around the plate. There's no doubt about that. But as you say, it may behoove him if he decides to take another tack. He's 10 for 10 in strikes, but they're getting hit. And already Ron Gardenhire pacing. 2 0 on the home run by Cabrera. Here's Andy Dirks, who hit a big home run last night, but maybe more importantly was his bunt single, which set up a big inning for the Tigers. Ball one. First ball thrown by either starting pitcher in this game. So Leland excited about the start for this one. His offense took a little while to get going last night. Not the case here tonight. There's a strike on Dirks. One and one. Vance Worley is 25 years old out of Sacramento. They give up Ben Revere to get him. They got him and Trevor May, another pitching prospect. Cabrera's fourth home run has given the Tigers a 2 0 lead. Dirk sends a ground ball back up the middle. This looks like a double play. Escobar turns it over for three, and that is that. However, the Tigers score first on the mighty bat of Miguel Cabrera. Like he does so many times, going the other way. Advantage brings you the scouting report on the active RBI leaders since 2005 against the Tigers. And atop that list, Justin Morneau with 82 RBI since 05. Heavy duty hitters on that list, and Morneau will start things off here in the second. Verlander had a snappy first inning. And he delivers ball one to Morneau. Morneau was swinging early and often. Uh, in last night's game against Max Scherzer, and he appeared to be off balance uh, in just about every swing that he took. He was 0 for 4 last night, batting 250, couple of home runs. Max Scherzer, terrific again last evening. 
10 strikeouts. Third time this year, 10 or more strikeouts for Maddox. Ah! Two and one. And didn't walk anybody. Yeah, that's the impressive thing. 114 pitches thrown on the night by Mr. Scherzer. Got him into the eighth inning. Strike call 2 2 on Justin Morneau. Majority of the pitches uh, that Verlander has thrown here tonight have been fastballs. Got a pop up, a ground out, and a strikeout of the first inning. Three and two. Parmalee and then Ploof to follow here in the second. Four, five, and six in the Minnesota lineup. Parmalee on deck. Now the three two. He walked in ball four. Leadoff man is on. Well, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game presented by the new premium McRap. And in the early going, Cabrera has to be one of your candidates. Using your cell phone, text Tigers, followed by a space, then the player's uniform number to 37338 or vote online at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Here is Chris Parmalee. One for four last night, had a two base hit. And he looks at ball one. Parmalee, by and large, has been their most patient hitter. He sees over four, uh, just about four and a half pitches per at bat, which is the highest mark on their team. We just got done with a series against the Atlanta Braves where it seemed like the Braves were up there swinging at everything. The 1 0. It's a wave and a miss. One ball and one strike. Not only were they swinging at everything, but they were missing a lot with their swings against Tigers pitching. That they were, and the Tigers recorded quite a few strikeouts in that series. And that has been one of the calling cards of this staff, the strikeout numbers. Swing and a miss. 94 that time from Verlander. 1 2. He's just starting to heat up here tonight. Normally batting just 219, he's hit one home run. Ball high, 2-2. Two, two. Justin had only four strikeouts in his last start, but he had 12 the start before that. That was at Safeco Field against the Seattle Mariners. Twelve strikeouts, but he ended up losing that game. There's a ground ball out of the reach of Johnny Peralta into left field. First two twins have been able to reach. And when you look back at the last 10 for Verlander against these Minnesota twins, the numbers softly impressive. 157 ERA, eight and one record. And opponent's batting average just 222 against Verlander. That would be Minnesota, of course. Well, the Twins trying to fight back after the two run homer by Cabrera. They have two men on now for Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe last night, one for four. Pops this one up. Shallow right field. Going to be a long run for Torrey into foul ground. Nobody can get it. Infante hands out a souvenir. Verlander needed just eight pitches in that first inning. But the Twins have put the first two men on here in the second. Ploof last year had that big streak in the middle of the summer in the month of June where he hit 11 home runs. Here's the 0 1. Ooh, that hit the knob of the bat. Something we saw last night with Austin Jackson. 0 and 2. That's what happens when guys have mid 90s fastballs a hitter. Like you have to get started a little sooner than you normally would against guys who don't have the big fastballs, and every now and then you get caught with that bat out there trying to pull it back. 
on a ball that you really don't want to swing at. Foul ball toward third. It's a foul ball. Ooh, nice pick there by Cabrera, but it's foul. Oh, and two. The count stays on Plouffe. That last pitch appeared to be a changeup at 87 miles an hour from Verlander, and that's one of the things that we touched on last night. All of the Tigers' right-handed starters have no problem whatsoever uh, throwing changeups to the right-handed batters. It hasn't always been that way. And pitching coaches used to kind of deter you from throwing changeups to right handers. And again, the 0 2. That's popped up and headed back to the seats out of play. Are you seeing that as a league wide thing all across baseball where guys are throwing more change ups? I think more and more right handers uh, have adopted that theory because it's such a good pitch, especially if you can command the change up down. And across baseball in the minor leagues, it's not so much the slider and the curveball that pitching coaches are teaching to the young kids. But it's the changeup once they get to rookie ball and a ball as the pitch that they say that kids need to go along with their fastball. Verlander having trouble putting Ploof away. And he does right there with a strike three call. Ploof does not agree. Verlander had to leave his last start after just six innings because he had an issue with. And they're not necessarily calling it a blister, but I, I guess there was some blood on his thumb and it was affecting his fastball. That's the only pitch that affected. Yeah, but he's not having any of those issues here today with the fastball. Most of the pitches he's thrown have been heaters. That last one at 96 miles an hour. His velocity has been up. It didn't affect the changeup, slider, or curveball, but only the fastball affected the thumb. Here is Oswaldo Arcia. Ball one to Arcia. We're kind of seeing something out of Verlander in the last couple of starts that we really haven't seen in a calendar year, and that's him coming out throwing 96 miles an hour in the first couple of innings. He also did that against the Kansas City Royals in his last start. There's a strike one one. Verlander's kind of been that guy that just kind of hovers right around 89 to 91 until he finds that real good arm slot. And then once he needs to dial up later in the game, obviously he can do that. Checked it. Ball high, two and one. Again, 96 miles an hour. So we're looking at mid-90s and above here for Verlander in the second inning. Leadoff walk, then a single. Putting two men aboard for Minnesota. That's fouled back out of play. Two and two. RCO was called up from the minor leagues where he was tearing it up in Rochester, albeit in just 10 games. He was batting 394. Started the season last year in A ball. There's a familiar face. Wilkin Ramirez, former Detroit Tiger, waiting on deck. And the 2 2. Fouled away again. So the Twins doing much better work in this inning of making Verlander work. The last one at 97. This game is kind of looking like the game did last night where they had some really good plate appearances against Max and fouled off quite a few pitches in the first four or five innings against Scherzer. There you go, 21 in this inning, eight in the first. Breaking ball. Oh, it was close. Verlander really wanted that one. He had him frozen. Good pitch. So it's three and two. Fly ball, right field. Torrey Hunter is under it. Two gone, runners will hold. 
That young man's got some bat speed. Arcia. He's going to be a good big league hitter. The two on two out that'll bring up Wilkin Ramirez and uh, Justin Verlander the. Uh, competitor that he is. May have uh, said something. We apologize if you may have heard some language from the field. He ended up getting the out of Arcia now Wilkin Ramirez will stand in. Ramirez batting 333. This at one time Rod was one of those prospects that you looked at and you said. He could really someday be something special. There really wasn't anything that he couldn't do on a baseball field. Real good minor league numbers. They haven't translated to the major leagues yet. But he's got a really good throwing arm, a good defender. He's got some power. He can run. Swing and a miss. Yeah, he was that combination in the minor leagues of power and speed, which obviously is very coveted in this game. Ramirez appeared briefly in the major leagues with Detroit. He played in 15 games back in 2009. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. Didn't do too badly either. 364 in that 15 game stretch with the Tigers in 09. That one home run was straight away center field right here. I don't remember who that was off of, but it went a long way. The dead center where it's 420. Now the 1 1. 2 and 1 on Wilkin Ramirez. So again, Verlander letting that fastball fly here in the early goings in this one. He's got two men aboard. Morno and Parmalee. And the 2 1. Rolled foul 2 2. Verlander can go a couple of different ways now to Ramirez. He can simply go back outside with that good slider down and away, which is the exact same way that he started Wilkin out in this at bat. Or he can finish him off with that good mid 90s uh, fastball around the belt buckle. Wilkin's pretty good low ball hitter. Drill toward left center field going to get down base hit maybe more Jackson over to cut it off one run will score Parmalee goes to third he'll stop there it's a double and an RBI for Wilkin Ramirez instead of going with the slider down and away Justin went with a curveball at 81 miles an hour and he left it up there for Wilkin Ramirez and Ramirez drilled this hanging breaking ball in the left center field and drove in the first run of the evening for Minnesota. That's the fourth RBI of the season for Ramirez, and it scored Morno easily. One run on two hits for Minnesota. Pedro Florimon will step in. And Verlander throwing from the windup. Ball one. Wilkin Ramirez getting his first start of the season in center field. Uh, that's because Aaron Hicks, their very young, talented, everyday center fielder, Struck out three times against Verlander opening day in Minnesota. Yeah, that just didn't appear to be a good matchup. Here's the 1 0. Big rip there by Florimon. They're getting some good rips at Verlander. One I think ball. they've kind of recognized what we've talked about, and that's the fact that a heavy dose of fastball so far in the first couple of innings from Justin. Do you have an inkling why Verlander is 95 96 97 with fastball here. I mean the only thing that I could think of is the fact that he just wanted to come out to make sure that uh, the little issue on the thumb was OK. As far as throwing fastballs. Now the 1 1. Two balls in one strike. Another fastball from Verlander. This much I do know Justin Verlander over the course of the last couple of years in my opinion. A much better pitcher when he's mixing in some off speed pitches, mixing in some breaking balls to go along with that mid 90s fastball. 67% fastballs so far in his mix tonight. Good pitch there in a fastball count. 
pulled the string on Flormon, and Flormon was out in front of that changeup. 40 total now for JV. 32 of them in this inning. Two and two trying to finish off Floramon here with two men in scoring position. And here it is. Swing and a miss. He will indeed finish him off. Third strikeout of the night for JV. They get a run on the double by Ramirez. Minnesota will strand a pair. And we'll go to the bottom of the second. It's now 2 1 Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Jeep, visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by Maxwell House Coffee, good to the last drop. Gorgeous night here in the Motor City as we welcome you back to Comerica Park. Two to one, Tigers have the lead on our way to the bottom of the second this evening. Vance Worley back to the hill. Johnny Peralta leads it off for Detroit. It'll be Peralta, Avila, and Infante. Tigers hit Worley pretty good in that first inning. He threw 13 pitches, 12 of them were strikes. He got a big double play to finally end the frame. But that was uh, not before Cabrera hit a two run shot. Here's the 0 1. Wave and miss by Peralta, 0 2. Comparison this year for Johnny and his start as compared to last year in the first month of the season. Pretty good. 12 RBIs already this year. Roll toward third, fair ball behind the back. Plouffe has it. One out. That'll bring up Alex Avila. Well, Avila, one for three last night, still trying to get it going. He's batting 176. A couple of homers this year for Alex. But outside one ball and no strikes on Avila. We told you that uh, Worley last year. Uh, pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies. A rotation that had Cliff Lee Cole Hamels. Roy Halladay is the front three. In that rotation in Philadelphia. In the air and hit well toward left field. Arcia is on the run. He's going to turn and watch it sail. It is gone. And out. 
opposite field home run for Alex Avila. And that is what he tried to do last year in Philadelphia. Lots of fastballs up in the zone, but he's not having much success doing that here in the junior circuit. That would be the American League. Second home run of the game. It's a fastball right around knee high, and Alex Avila really loves the ball in that area. Really slow feet that time for Alex. Real good base, real quick hands through the zone. Tigers added the lead now, three to one. Avila hits his third of the year. Just to finish that thought on Worley, you know, being the number four starter in Philadelphia, all of a sudden he's traded to Minnesota and he's their opening day starter. So he used to go up against four and five uh, starting pitchers in the other league. Now he's going up against all the aces in the American League and he hasn't gotten off to a good start. Second time he's hooked up with Justin Verland. Yeah, much different feel this year for Worley. And you mentioned the guys that he was pitching with, Halliday, Lee. Cole Hamels. He said the one thing I did learn is to see how those guys prepared. But a lot was expected of Worley coming over as they revamped their entire staff. Here's the 2 1. Infante looks at a ball 3 and 1. Good count here for Infante. Real good fastball hitter. If Worley throws him one, Omar will most certainly get a really good swing at it. Fouled away. Check out the Farmers Insurance Report Card on Mr. Infante. Major League ranks among number nine hitters in this what we've talked a lot about Rod his production down low he's been holding his own and we talk a lot about uh, Austin Jackson and Torrey Hunter at the top of that batting order but Omar Infante also a major reason why Miguel Cabrera is always hitting with runners in scoring position three and two on Infante at his six game hitting streak Come to an end in the ball game last night. There's Jackson waiting on deck. Omar's already had a couple of nice hitting streaks this year. One of nine, one of six. And he walked it. First walk of the game for Vance Worley. Turn things over now to the top of the lineup. Austin Jackson comes strolling in for his second at bat of the game. Omar can also steal your base if you forget about him over at first. He gets pretty good jump. There will be nothing Joe Maurer can do. Jackson struck out. Back in the first. Infante is one for one this year in trying to steal second base. High fly ball right field hit pretty well a lot of room out there though. Harmony goes to the warning track. Two outs. Here's Tory Hunter. Tory now with eight hits on this home stand. He doubled and scored back in the first. I was asking Tori the other day why the spelling of his name has two eyes at the end of it. And uh, I told Tori, I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times. He says, I have, and I have no good answer for it. <laughs> I said, my mom just stuck an extra eye on there. That's all I got for you. Okay. There's a strike call. It's different, though. And Tori has carved out a tremendous career in the big leagues over 2000 hits it's knocking on the door of 300 home runs he needs two homers to reach the 300 plateau foul back out of play 0 2 not only has he been an outstanding player but very well well respected very popular within his own clubhouse on whichever team 
he's playing for. 17th year in the major leagues, and Torrey told me that he's in better shape now than he was when he was in his mid 20s. I believe it. Low and away, one and two. Even yesterday, he had the day off, but he's running the stairs, he's running sprints in the outfield, extra batting practice. One ball, two strikes. Torrey leads the American League with 13 multiple hit games already this season. That's why his average has hovered around 400 most of the month of April. It's at 381 right now. Worley taking too long. And now Maurer finally walks out to the mound. Tigers ahead, three to one. The home run by Alex Avila has lengthened the lead again. Last four home runs the Tigers have hit have all been opposite field home runs. Two by Miguel Cabrera, one last night by Prince, and that homer by Avila went to left field. We've talked a lot about the pitching staff, but the offense. Is performing well itself. Slow roller towards second base. Escobar has it. Hunter is out. And the inning is over. However, the Tigers add one more thanks to Mr. Avila. Solo shot. Three to one. You're watching Tigers baseball. Well, the Tigers head to the top of the third, leading this one three to one on the strength of a couple of home runs tonight. Miguel Cabrera and Alex Avila. Justin Verlander goes back to work. He will face the top of the lineup. It's Eduardo Escobar to lead it off. Escobar, Maurer, and Willingham. Bouncing ball, first base side. That is a foul ball. Escobar popped up his first time. He's 0 for 1. Tigers came into play tonight 14 and 10, four over the 500 mark. Minnesota even up at 11 and 11. Escobar has been one of the better hitters for the Twins this year. In fact, he came in leading the Twins in average, on base percentage, slugging percentage. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss. 
one and two on Eduardo Escobar. Two balls, two strikes. Lots of new faces with this uh, Minnesota Twins team in 2013. They finished in last place for a second consecutive season. Uh, last year in the AL Central. Foul straight back. New starting rotation. A lot of the kids are getting an opportunity to play. Ron Gardenhire working on a one year contract. Several of his coaches were let go. They brought in some new faces. Fouled out of play. Well, this is the 12th season for Ron Gardenhire. He's had a lot of success. Six first place finishes in the American League Central Division. The numbers in his career 943 victories in the 11 previous seasons, and of course, part of this year. Again, the 2 2. Bouncing ball to short. Johnny Peralta has it there. Escobar is out. It's going to bring up Joe Maurer, who's really fighting it right now. You don't normally see streaks like this. Why? Because it's the longest of his career. Over 21. He might do something differently here. He never really likes to swing at the first pitch. As a matter of fact, he took the first pitch his first time up, and he now takes that first pitch about 93% of the time. The average down to 286 for Joe Maurer. And he'll take ball one outside. Even though Justin knows what we just told you, he threw him a first pitch changeup. Maurer bounced out to the first baseman fielder. Back in the first inning. Ball outside. 2 and 0. Oh. There's that stat. 93% of the time that first pitch will go right by him. By design. Here's the 2 0. -oh. That's a strike 2 and 1. He hasn't changed uh, since he's come to the big leagues. Just about every time he makes contact, when he's going good, he drives the ball from a second base over into center field to left field. Doesn't use right field all that often. Two and two. Well, he's hit 306 of his nine big league seasons. The first overall pick in baseball back in 2001. Of course, he's a uh, Twin Cities native. And the 2 2. Three balls, two strikes on Maurer. Verlander had just an eight pitch first inning, but as we play here in the third now, he's up to 53. 3 2 pitch. And there's a base hit from Maurer. That'll break that string. One out single. Let's check back into the studio now. And we join Mickey York for a game break. That's right. <laughs> he just teed that one up and you hit it out of the park. Ask and you shall receive. One on one out. Here is Willingham. And he fouls it back out of play. Verlander struck him out rather quickly back in the first inning. And Willingham homered in last night's ball game. It was his fifth of the year. He is going to provide them with a lot more power as he did last year. 35 homers. Mauer at first base with one out. And the 0 1. 
Good pickup by Avila. One ball, one strike. Willingham has excellent pull power. And when he gets the ball up in the air to left field, it's usually a homer. Big swing there, one and two. Nice change piece there. By Verlander. Nice fading action. Circle change. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Second time he has fanned him tonight. Willingham goes down. And Verlander now four strikeouts. It's a breaking ball that's up in the strike zone, but Willingham swung right underneath it. You can get away with this pitch right here, even when it's not your best breaking ball when you're going up against a power hitter, a guy that's just not trying to put the ball in play. Your contact hitters, they foul that off or they put it in play somewhere. Morno takes a big rip. This Twins team came in in last night's game and they weren't striking out that much as a club. But Max got him 10 times last night. Verlander's on his way. He already has four. The 0 1. One ball, one strike. Morno had that leadoff walk back in the second, eventually scored on the double by Wilkin Ramirez. Big year for Justin Morneau. It's his final season of his contract. Free agent at the end of the year. He's 31 years of age. He's had a history, obviously, of injuries. The production is not where it has been in his heyday when the Twins were winning division titles. He wants to stay with Minnesota. But Terry Ryan, the new general manager in the Minnesota, told Justin, I'll just go out and play and It'll all take care of itself. Got him. Strike three. Chad Fairchild with a late strike three call. Morno can't believe it. Verlander five strikeouts. Nothing comes of the one out single. No runs. A hit. One man left. Miguel Cabrera who's already homered in this game consecutive months with a 209 or 295 average or more 20 or more RBIs in the last 90 years Cabrera's done it seven times and look at some of the names on that list. Garrett Ruth and Fox in the Hall of Fame.
I think Freddie Gonzalez said it best uh, just a few days ago when the Atlanta Braves were in town. Freddie, of course, is the manager of the Braves. He managed Cabrera in Florida for one year, and he said that when Cabrera is on the baseball field, he does things that simply no one else on the field that night can do. That's in the air, right side, foul ground. Morno runs it down. Well, his first at bat seemed to be a, a good example of that, hitting the ball as far as he did the opposite way, basically a flick of the wrist on one foot. Pretty amazing, but then again, it becomes kind of something you expect out of him. Enjoy it while you can, people. You may not ever see another hitter as talented as Miguel Cabrera in the Tigers uniform. Fielder, he had a base hit in the first. Strokes this one toward left center field. Caught on the run by Arcia. Hit it hard, but two gone. Want to remind you to have your picnic or party in an upcoming Tigers game. Group picnics and party suites are on sale right now. Groups of 15 or more. Get discount tickets to select games. There's the phone number 313 471 ball. Or you can go online, tigers.com. Victor Martinez now. Vance Worley has yet to have a 1 2 3 inning. Victor had a single back in the first. Foul back out of play. Say this about Vance Worley. He is throwing strikes tonight. And the Tigers are swinging early as well. Miguel swung at the second pitch. Prince swung at the first pitch. Victor also swung at the first pitch because they know Worley is coming right after them. In on his hands that time and he popped it up. Escobar and a quick one, two, three inning for Vance Worley. As we go to the fourth, Tigers on top three to one. Fourth inning, and don't forget it's a Fox Sports Detroit Prize Pack Tuesday brought to you by Meyer. Text Meyer to 37338, and you will be eligible to win a fantastic prize pack that any baseball fan would love. Meyer math means savings that really add up. At Meyer, the math always works in your favor. Right now, the math is working in the Tigers' favor. They lead by a couple of runs. Verlander back to the hill, and he's got Chris Parmalee standing in. Parmalee and then Ploof and then Arcia. JV has struck out five already in this game. Ball one outside. 
We were discussing all the strikeouts last half inning Rod, and how strikeouts really seem to be up certainly the Tigers starting pitchers have had their share and Jim Leland was asked before the game today why the strikeouts seem to be up and he said the one thing he has noticed is that a lot of teams have gotten away from having a two strike approach they've become much more aggressive with two strikes taking longer swings would, would you agree with that you know I'd have to watch a little bit yeah. uh, to determine whether that's exactly what I'm observing but you know obviously Jim's right down there he's real close to the action on a nightly basis that balls in a ton to right center field Jackson will go over there though and it's Hunter to make the catch one go. I think Craig Monroe had a really nice point on this same subject in the, the pregame show today he talked about a lot of younger hitters getting to the major leagues after only spending one or two years in the minors and the guys are learning how to hit on the fly up here in the show. Well, the Tigers 247 strikeouts right behind Boston. American League average 194. But it seems like every night a Tiger starting pitcher is threatening double digits in strikeouts. You've got bullpens. Just about everybody in every single bullpen is 95 miles an hour and above. In the shallow right field, Hunter comes on to make the play. Torrey had a basket on that one. Two gone. And that's the other thing Leland said. He said maybe one of the biggest changes we've seen over the past decade or so in the game is the bullpens and how dominant they've become. There used to just be a specialist, maybe for the eighth inning, a setup guy, and then your closer. Uh, but now you've got designated guys for the sixth inning, the seventh inning, the eighth, and the ninth, and they all throw very hard. Oswaldo Arcia flied out to Hunter back in the second inning. He is 0 for 1. Verlander in hopes of a quick fourth inning here. And he missed outside 1 0. Arcia last year in the minor leagues knocked in 98 runs. Which is one heck of a minor league season. Considering they play about a one month fewer worth of games in the minors. Popped up foul. I like his bat speed. Some guys you watch up here that are young. And you just know they're going to hit. This guy's going to hit. That's sort of a Bobby Abreu build to him physically. Kind of looks like him a little too. Here's the 2 1. Foul back 2 2. Well, RC is still very young. As you mentioned he was an A ball last year. He's only 21. Native of Venezuela. Will not be 22 until May 9th. Well, we've got a birthday coming up. Now the 2 2. It's the best curveball Verlander's thrown here tonight. And Arcia was able to lay off of it. It's a really good breaking ball. It's down. Some good break on it. And he ends up losing him. Two out walk. So Verlander will not get his one two three inning. That 33 pitch second remains his longest. We'll bring up Wilkin Ramirez. And with Verlander's pitch count being at 72. The Tigers might need to get three innings out of that bullpen here tonight. Strike call. RBI double back in the second for Ramirez put the twins on the board three to one right now Tigers have the lead and they've out hit Minnesota five to three.
Owen two. Ramirez earlier this year in that first series of the season in Minnesota had a pinch hit double back on the 3rd of April against his former teammates. Tried to check and he went around strike three Verlander picks up another strikeout his sixth and nothing comes of the two out walk. Three and a half of the books. Middle of everything the Tigers did offensively. He homered a solo shot in the third, and then the Tigers trailing by a couple of runs in the sixth inning. Perfect base hit bunt down the line, which kind of set the stage uh, for Miguel, who walked, and then a three run homer uh, by Prince Fielder. So, outstanding night by Dirks last night, who really likes hitting in that number two slot. Well, tonight he is batting in the sixth slot. Dirks will stand in after bouncing into a double play his first time up. And as he has most of the night, Vance Worley throws a strike. He is now 11 of 15 in first pitch strikes. He has Dirks, Peralta, and Avila here in the fourth. Here's the 0-1. One ball, one strike. That's what Max Scherzer said that uh, he was most impressed about his evening last night. The fact that he was nearly first pitch strike on Every single Minnesota Twins hitter that went up there last night, and he didn't walk anybody. And when you have the kind of stuff that Max has, the mid 90s fastball with the three off speed pitches, well, it could be a long, long night if he strike one on you every single at bat. Scherzer struck out six of the final ten batters he faced in last night's game. He got on a roll. Broken bat, soft liner caught by Escobar. One out. They stay with us after the Tigers for game one of the NHL playoffs. Red Wings take on the Anaheim Ducks. Coverage starts with Red Wings live. Game one, Wings and Ducks immediately following the conclusion of Tigers Twins on Fox Sports Detroit. 22 consecutive years the Red Wings have gone to the playoffs. 22 in a row. Pretty amazing. I mean, it's it's stunning to think about it. And there really is nothing like playoff hockey. It is an animal that is much different. Here's Peralta swing and a miss. Yeah, a lot of bloody noses. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Well, there <laughs> is, though. They get after it. They do, man. It's intense every single game. High drama. Peralta bounced out in his first at bat. Here is Worley's 1-1. One, one. Two and one the count. 
Peralta was two for three against Worley in that series to start the year at Target Field. Takes a deep breath in the 2 1. Almost hit him 3 and 1. Avila waiting on deck. He is already homered tonight. Now the 3 1 pitch in there for a strike. Did not give in. Came in with a breaking ball to make it 3 and 2. Worley faced Verlander on opening day, as a matter of fact, at Target Field. Went six innings, gave up three earned runs in that game. He's out of Sacramento, California, 25 years old, Vance Worley. DL timed last year over in the National League after starting off quickly in the month of April. Drill towards center field. That's going to drop base hit. And Peralta has a one out single. If you missed it earlier, uh, Alex Avila in his first plate appearance tonight in the second inning, solo shot to left field. It's good to see. Alex came out yesterday, took some early batting practice uh, with Lloyd McClendon and also Toby Hara. Had one hit in last night's game, but that one. Left the building. You've talked about it a lot. Sometimes when you have guys that are struggling, hit and run is something that a manager will employ to get his bat going a little bit. No doubt it takes all the guesswork out of it for a hitter. Fouled back out of play 0 and 1. And also managers like to use combinations where the opposing manager not necessarily thinking about the hit and run. Peralta not the fleetest. A foot over at first. Here's the 0 1. Outside, one ball, one strike. Avila now has three homers and three RBIs. Three to one Tigers lead two run shot by Cabrera in the first solo homer by Alex in the second. Foul back one and two. Well just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. Who knows that home run by Avila just might be that very highlight one and two ground ball second base side Escobar fires to second one of the relay from Florimone is a double play it's the second one turn tonight by the Minnesota infield that one goes four six three JB back to the hill for the Tigers up three to one.
by Arby's. Try Arby's new King's Hawaiian Roast Beef Sandwich. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Spectacular evening in downtown Detroit tonight. The Tigers on top, 3-1 to one as we go to the fifth inning. Temperature in the 70s at the start of the game here this evening. And Verlander back to work. Pedro Flormon leads it off. And ball one misses outside. Well, Justin was three for three in first pitch strikes in that first inning, but since has now gone nine for 18. Flormon struck out in the second. And there's the strike on the outer edge. One and one. 77 pitches now thrown by the Tigers ace. Popped up right side of the infield. Back to the grass goes Infante. One away. Here's today's high speed stat brought to you by Charter Internet. I told you earlier that Verlander came out throwing very hard. In tonight's game, he's already thrown, thrown 13 pitches, 95 and above. Usually, Verlander doesn't uh, put his foot on the gas pedal until about the sixth, seventh inning. Came out speeding tonight. Escobar swings on the first pitch. And that's the dead center field. Jackson is under it. Two outs. Time now for the AT&T trivia question before being drafted by the Twins. What sport did Joe Maurer sign a letter of intent to play? And we would like to know which school that was with. Just the sport and the school. You're asking for a lot tonight. Well, we are a demanding bunch. We've talked about that a lot, so folks should have a pretty good idea of at least the sport. There's a strike call. Tigers have out hit the Twins tonight, six to three. Maurer is one for two, had a single in the third, and that broke an 0 for 21 skid, the longest hitless streak of his career. He Think came. About, he came into play tonight with a 373 career batting average against Justin. Three home runs as well. Now the 0-2. Ball high. One ball, two strikes. Verlander trying to get that pitch count back in order. Had a 33 pitch second. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. Davey got him that time. It's a one two three fifth inning. Verlander has just recorded his seventh strike out of this game. Joe Maurer the victim.
it's been a pretty good ride for Omar Infante. He has a walk tonight. Infante on the current homestand, 455 with a couple of long balls. He did a lot of damage in that Atlanta series. Omar with 10 hits on this homestand. And he takes strike one to start the bottom of the fifth inning. Omar wore out his former club, the Atlanta Braves. A team which he made his only All Star appearance with back in 2010. Worley misses low, one ball, one strike. Worley has been the recipient of a couple of double play balls, but he's also given up a couple of homers Cabrera and Avila. Outside, two and one. That is something that uh, both of these pitching staffs have been very good at, and that's keeping the ball in the ballpark. And neither team has really given up that many homers this year. Rick Anderson, their pitching coach, in his 12th season. Here's a strike call, 2 2. Infante and then Jackson and Hunter here in the Tiger fifth inning. Tigers have out hit Minnesota 6 to 3. And the 2 2. Ground ball left side. Knocked down by Florimone. Going to have to hurry. No shot. Florimone had him play perfectly. Uh, but when he went over to backhand the ball, he closed the glove too soon. Therefore, the, the ball didn't stay in the glove. And then he picked it up. He's got a strong arm, but he couldn't throw Infante out. Infante, too much speed. Still waiting on the ruling. Leadoff man is on. They might give him a hit, but it could very easily go as an air. Had he made the play cleanly, he would have thrown him out. There's your verdict. Hit. I had E6 in my score sheet. You already had written it down? I did. I was wrong. Runner goes and it's fouled out of play. What did you think on that play? I thought it could have gone as an air. Especially with the range that uh, Florimon has shown in this series. Jackson is 0 for 2. Tigers trying to extend their lead. They had some early offense, but haven't scored in the last couple of innings. Don't know for sure, but that first pitch to Jackson appeared to be a hit and run. And Fonte was on the move. Ball inside. We watched Mike Pelfrey last night. He pitched for Minnesota and he pitched very well uh, until the home run by Prince Fielder late in the game in the sixth, to be exact. But he and both Vance Worley not afraid to go inside with fastballs that don't get much above 92 miles an hour. Two and one. Well, another good count to put the runner on the move if and Jim wants to get him down in the scoring position for Tory and Miguel. Not going in his high, three balls, one strike. Hunter waiting on deck. Torrey already with a double in the game. Swing and a miss. Three and two. I think. Jim will allow Infante to take off here. 3 2 count. Nobody out. There he goes. And that's into the center field base hit. Infante will get the third. Jackson has a base hit. First and third, nobody out. Nice job there by Austin Jackson. It's a 3 2 count. Real short. Quick compact swing by Ajax. One of the reasons why Jim let Infante go. Jackson not striking out nearly as much as he did the first couple of years in the big leagues. 
There's that trust factor now with Austin to put the ball in play. Austin also five of five this year in stolen bases. Now Tory Hunter who is one for two doubled and scored in the first. Eight hits on the homestand for Tory. Here's where uh, Tory really likes to shoot that hole on the right side. And the reason why it's a good play here is the fact that if he can get one uh, past the second baseman or even if Escobar does make a play it's harder to turn that four six three double play versus hitting it to the shortstop and going six four three. Popped up back out of play. Fourteen hits for Torrey Hunter to right field this season. That's why the batting average is way up there. 378. Here it is waiting for him right through there. <laughs> Let's see if he follows your lead. Swing and a miss. Oh and two. Worley faced the minimum over the last two innings but in trouble here in the fifth singles by Infante and Jackson. Tigers trying to build on their three to one lead. Foul away. Worley's best fastball so far tonight has been 92. He's gone as low as 74 with an off speed pitch. And we think Xfinity for the readings on those two pitches. Ground ball slowly towards short. Florimone with the scoop. Hunter is out. Score the run. Tigers lead four to one. And give Torrey his 12th RBI. Well, he fell behind 0 and 2, but he knocked in the run. It's going to bring up Cabrera. Jackson advancing to second on that ground ball. Tigers clicking on all cylinders right now. If they have a runner on second base with nobody out, they'll manufacture a run. Get him the third with less than two outs, they'll get him in. Or Miggy in fielder in Avila. And even Dirk last night playing long ball. So the if the offense is very efficient right now. Dirks had the bunt single last night of the homer. Cabrera has homered in this game, so is Avila. Ground ball towards short. Florimone's going to come to third, and the tag is in time. Jackson is out. Jackson makes a uh, mental mistake here. Not going to say physical, but as a rule of thumb, when the ball's hit to your right, take a look at Jackson here. Freeze it right there. That ball is clearly to his right, really nowhere for Austin to go. So Flormon just goes over, backhands it, then he gives it over to Pluth, and they get the easy out. Austin was already in scoring position, no need for him to force the issue there. Cabrera is aboard on the fielder's choice. That's going to bring up Prince Fielder. Tigers have added a run here in the fifth. They lead four to one. One ball, no strikes on Prince. Single in the flyout tonight for Fielder. He was playing in his 368th consecutive game. And he drills one to right field. That ball is hit well, and that ball is gone. Oh, did that get out in a hurry? His swing is so short and so quick and so lethal. 
Harmerly took two steps and it got out lickety split. Looked like Worley tried to get inside on Prince Fielder and look at him pull the hands in here. And the back speed for a guy that is as big and strong and physical as Prince Fielder is is amazing. Most guys that size with that kind of power, long, big swings. Not the Prince. Bat speed, bat flip. Killed it, and it's six to one. Awfully fun to watch. Awfully fun to watch. His home runs are violent. And for Prince, that is his seventh of the year. Strike home. <laughs> Tigers tonight with three home runs. And a five run lead. Martinez had a single in the first. Line the other way. Two balls, two strikes on Victor Martinez. Swarzak warming up in the bullpen for Minnesota. Two and two. Follow the way again. Just wait until they get this guy going. Yeah, then it's really going to get fun. And you can tell he's uh, pretty much on the cusp. Here's the 25th pitch of this half inning coming up. And he missed with it. Three and two. 75 total for Vance Worley. Justin Verlander, the recipient of six runs tonight. Worley gave up three runs the first time he met the Tigers on opening day. That's grilled toward left field. And over the head of Arcia. Victor on his way to second with a double. We told you earlier that Worley has spent his entire big league career pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies. And he got away with a lot of high fastballs pitching for Philadelphia, but he didn't get away with that high fastball. 93. Victor climbs the ladder, gets on top of it, and hits it over the head of RC of the left fielder. Ron Gardenhier says, "Get me someone else." Tenth Tigers hit of this game. Worley will not survive the fifth. Swarzak being summoned in from the bullpen. And Minnesota will make a pitching change here in the fifth inning. Wall sign windows pitching change. We'll be back.
seconds on here today it was Miguel Cabrera back in the first inning against the starter of Vance Worley. He went the opposite way. Avila also uh, went the opposite way. And Prince Fielder, for the most part, the entire series has hit everything the opposite way. And when you start to do that, they're going to try to get inside on you. And Worley tried that in the fifth, and Prince made him pay. Long ball has been on display tonight here at the ballpark. As a result, the Tigers have built a lead. We've got a new pitcher now for the Minnesota Twins, Anthony Swarzak. He's on. Just about everybody in that bullpen for Minnesota having pretty good seasons, at least a good April. 231 ERA for Swarzak. Uh, the opponent's hitting 239 against him, and he hasn't given up a home run this year. The 11 and two thirds is more than any other reliever for Minnesota. And Dirk's rifles went into right field. Martinez hitting third. He's coming home. Carmelis throw to the plate is in time. Victor is out as Mauer tags him at home. Single for Dirk's Parmalee with an assist. And Martinez cut down at the plate. Tigers still have a big inning though. Prince with a two run shot. Six to one Mario and Pemba Rod Allen back here at the ballpark and so far so good in this one Rod for the Tigers and you know, when you look at this one Justin Verlander came out a little bit of a different look in this game. He was pumping some fastballs early 95 96 in the first couple of innings and Max had 10 strikeouts last night Verlander already has seven here tonight. Tigers also have three long balls in this game and that's something that we knew coming in was going to be a big part of their game. Go figure the Minnesota Twins came in as a staff only giving up 11 homers. And they've already given up five in this series and we talked about it last half inning this Tigers offense right now is just clicking. I mean you have a couple of guys that have gotten off to slow starts but by and large seven of the nine guys are having really good productive Aprils. And Verlander is the recipient of all of the offense in this one here. Six one in favor of Detroit Josh Willingham leading it off. Here's the 0 1 swing and a miss 0 and 2. Willingham has punched out twice against Verlander. Justin has a total of seven in the strikeout column tonight. Willingham has that look on his face like I just can't figure this guy out tonight. Morno and then Parmalee to follow 3 4 5 for Minnesota. Here's the 0 2. One ball, two strikes. There's Morno waiting on deck. 
The only run that Verlander gave up came in the second. And a two out two base hit by Wilkin Ramirez. That drove home Morno. Two and two. Verlander in search of his third win of the season, having a terrific month of April. Came in with a 195 ERA. Here's the 2 2. Just missed the breaking ball 3 2. Tigers uh, have a couple of pitchers in their rotation. They're going to get some serious consideration for a uh, pitcher in the month, in the month of uh, April, but I think that guy, Matt Moore. Uh, down in Tampa, who was five and five with an outstanding ERA, probably got that locked up. And here's a base hit to left. He got ahead of Willingham. No balls, two strikes, a couple of changeups back to back that missed. Two two, and he drilled that to left. Time now for the AT&T trivia question again. Here it is. Before being drafted by the Twins, what sport did Joe Mauer sign a letter of intent to play, and at which school was it? Joe Maurer, as you know, was an outstanding football player, signed a national letter of intent to quarterback at Florida State, but ended up signing as the number one overall pick with the Minnesota Twins. He was the top quarterback in the country in high school that year. As a matter of fact, he was a Gatorade National Player of the Year in baseball and football. Same season, pretty incredible. And he also played some point guard on the, uh, the basketball team. All state and hoops as well. He wasn't the big man on campus, was he? <laughs> yes, he was. Can you imagine if he'd have gotten to Florida State, he would have owned that campus. It's fouled back out of play. One ball, one strike on Morno. See if Justin can get. Uh, more no to hit something on the ground with an off speed pitch or a change up. Help himself out here in the sixth of the double play. Two and one. Morno with a strikeout and a walk and has scored to this point the Twins only run. And that was way back in the second. Willingham at first, nobody out. Foul back out of play. 2 2 on Morno. On deck, Parmalee. Justin Morno broke up Matt Harvey's no hit bid back on the 13th of April with a home run in the seventh inning. We'll shoot this one in the air toward left field on the charge. Dirk's coming hard. He'll make the catch. Nice play by Andy Dirks. And while we have a moment, back to the studio we go. Here's Mickey York. Mickey, thank you. Here it is, 6 1 in favor of Detroit. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The more evidence, it seems, that that knee of Andy Dirks must be feeling a lot better. Yes, he had to uh, run quite a ways to get to that uh, ball that appeared to be close to foul territory off the bat of Morneau. Here's a look at Dirks' butt base hit last night. Home run last night. Solid single to right field. Victor was thrown out at home plate, so clearly his legs are underneath him, and that knee is a lot stronger because he's swinging the bat a whole lot better. You just feel better, too, when you get a couple of hits. Parmalee, the batter. There's the strike. That's probably the best conic ever, isn't it? <laughs> you got that right. A couple of knocks. 0 oh 2. Primarily a single and a flyout. Ground ball, third base side, diving stop Cabrera to second one. That's all they get, but a nifty play. 
Tigers defensively this year have committed only six errors. And the errors on the Diamondbacks in the National League also have committed six errors. Looked like uh, Miggy had a difficult time of kind of getting that ball out of the glove into the throwing hand, therefore just one out was all they could get on that play. Two gone now. That'll bring up Trevor Plouffe. Strikeout and line out. Ball one. Verlander has thrown as many as 126 pitches in a game. That came two starts ago in Seattle. That game in which he struck out 12. Inside off the glove of Avila, move the runner up. Avila was set up outside, and the fastball tailed up and in to Plouffe, and Avila got glove on it, but couldn't catch it. They've ruled it a pass ball. Harmony now in scoring position. Two and all the count on Trevor Plouffe. Fouled away. Two and one. So 100 total now for Justin. Second and third innings, his longest. Only an eight pitch fifth. And the two one. Three balls and one strike. Here's a three one pitch bouncing ball shortstop side. Peralta with a backhand pulls him out. That is that for Minnesota. No runs one hit. They leave a man. And we go to the bottom of the sixth, 6-1 six Detroit. Brought to you by Joseph A. Bank. We fit everyone. Visit josephabank.com. Well, it's turned out to be a tremendous night here in downtown Detroit. 6 1 in favor of the Tigers as we meander to the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Temperature in the 70s at game time tonight. Tigers offense has erupted for three homers. Justin Verlander has done the rest. Peralta, Avila, Infante, bottom three in the lineup facing Anthony Swarzak. Worley knocked out of the game in the fifth. Swarzak took over, gave up a single, but had Martinez thrown out at the plate to end the inning. And Johnny looks at a ball high. Six runs, 11 hits for Detroit, one run, four hits for the visiting Twins. Two balls, no strikes. Tigers in search of their fifth straight win. Here's the 2 0. Ground ball left side. Plouffe cuts it off at third. One out of the sixth inning. And we'll bring up Alex Avila. What do you got on this uh, upcoming road trip we have coming up, Rod? Going to Houston. Houston in the American League now. We made a trip there in the Interleague play a couple of years ago. It's a pretty good ballpark. They strike out a lot. They do. And you know what the Tigers will be taking in there as far as their pitching staff is concerned. It's a pretty good matchup, isn't it? Uh, they lead the American League in strikeouts at start of play today, 235 total for Houston Astros batters. They beat the Yankees last night, though. Yeah, they did. There's a strike call down Avila. Alex, a double play ball and a homer. Not going to be as hot as it usually is when we. Uh, Go to Texas. Mid 70s, low 80s for the weather. I'll take that. Houston in April slash May is, I would imagine, much more comfortable than Houston in August and September. No doubt about that. Although they are somewhat climate controlled with their ballpark. One and one on Avila. Ball high, two and one. Looking forward to getting to uh, D.C. Yeah. And that kid Brian Hart. I mean uh, Bryce Harper. No sophomore jinx regarding him. None whatsoever. Bouncing ball right side. Now the backhand. Morno. Swarzak covers two gone. And that'll leave it up to Infante. Hey, don't forget to see the Tigers battle the Minnesota Twins tomorrow at 108. Take advantage of the Super Spring Special. Upper box seats are half price. That's right. Only $13. 866-66-TIGER or Tigers.com. Love Saturday day games here during the week. Day baseball tomorrow. And it's on the road. There's a strike call. 0-1. Did I, say, walk. did I say Saturday baseball during the week? I think you meant weekday baseball. <laughs> Thank you. I was just going to let it slide by. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, and two on Infante. We knew what you meant. Day games during the week are very nice and pleasant here at Comerica Park. Saturday day games during the week would take a trick. I don't know if we can pull that off. Weather's supposed to be nice again tomorrow, so make your plans to be here. And if the Tigers can hold on to this one, they will be playing for the sweep, but still a long way to go in this game. Tigers have badly out hit the Twins tonight, 11 to 4. Here's the 0-2. One ball and two strikes. And the one two pitch. Ground ball is short. Floramon. Infante is out by a step. It's a one two three inning for Swarzak. Here comes Verlander for the seventh.
game is brought to you by Head and Shoulders. Verlander had seven. Max Scherzer had ten last night. Minnesota Twins came in, a team that doesn't strike out all that often, but these Tigers hurlers have been unbelievable in the month of April. Firm fastballs by Verlander up to 97 miles an hour. The best curveball we've seen out of Justin as well this year, along with some really good circle changeups. And it's six to one. There are the numbers on Verlander. Six innings, seven punch outs. He's walked a couple, giving up just four hits. Tiger starters with a quality start in 14 of the last 16 coming in. Ball outside to Oswaldo Arcia. Fly ball and a walk. And the 1 0. Ball two. Action in the Detroit bullpen. It features Drew Smiley and Al Albuquerque. Here's the 2 0. Ground ball first base side right at Prince. Verlander covers for the out. Prince could have taken that by himself, but uh, he gave it to the ace because the ace. It got over there so fast. Might as well reward him. Here's Wilkin Ramirez. For as good a pitcher as Verlander is, he doesn't get nearly the credit that he deserves for fielding his position. A real quick move as far as the pickoff is concerned. Waste little time on balls hit to the right side of the infield covering the base. All that kind of gets lost uh, because he's so talented uh, with that right arm. Ramirez had a double to knock one in back in the second. Ball high. That was really one of the only few mistakes Verlander made today was with a breaking ball. And he hung it and Wilkin drilled it to left center field for that double in an RBI. That was Verlander's most stressful inning of the night, too. Big rip there by Wilkin. You might see Verlander. Uh, let it all hang out in this inning. He knows this is more than likely his last frame that he's going to pitch. We might see a 98 mile per hour fastball here this evening or above. Two and one. Again, the high water mark for the month of April for Verlander 126 pitches. Two starts to go in Seattle. Last year in the month of April, I think his third start in, he threw 131 pitches against the Kansas City Royals. There's a base hit to left. Another hanging breaking ball to Wilkin Ramirez. His second hit tonight. One on and one out. We remind you that MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. It's available for iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, whatever. You're sporting these days at bat delivers Detroit Tigers baseball with live audio pitch tracking stats news highlights and more text at bat to three one eight two six. Ramirez with two of the five hits. That they have gotten today. Pedro Florimone. Fouled away on one. Loramon is 0 for 2. Strikeout, pop up. There's another one back out of play. 0 and 2. You know what's really fascinating about these Tigers the staff, the front four, Verlander and Sanchez and Fister and Scherzer? They throw lots of strikes. Swing and a miss. Oh, that was ugly. That was dirty. Slider down and in. That's what a good slider looks like, folks. Disguised looks like a fastball coming out of the hand stays on the fastball plane all the way until it gets about five feet from home plate and all of a sudden it disappears on you. 
Eight strikeouts now for JV. Escobar. Well, it's going to be Sanchez tomorrow in his 1.34 ERA. How good was he mm. five days ago? Ground ball right at Prince. He'll take it himself. In it over. No runs. They get a hit. They leave a man. Stretch time here at the ballpark. The Tigers base. In the bottom of the seventh, Tigers offense this series against the Twins. Ten runs, nine of them coming via the home run. Cabrera and Prince, so they've been awfully good. Ninth game that both have hit a homer since becoming teammates. And Justin Verlander, eight strikeouts tonight. Justin's ERA dipping down to 183 at this point. And his offense has provided him with a little bit of a cushion tonight. 6 1 is our score. Tigers batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jackson Hunter Cabrera. First pitch is a strike called on Austin. One for three tonight for Jackson. Swarzak came on in the fifth. He had a one, two, three, sixth. Breaking ball in for strike two. And the 0-2 pitch. Got him. Strike three. Chad Fairchild's got that late trigger tonight. It's almost as if he's winding it up. Starting up that lawnmower. There it is. Strike three. Here's Torrey Hunter. RBI and a double and a run scored tonight. Way outside 1 0. Torrey now with 12 driven in this year, batting 374. Bouncing ball third base side, Pluth. Nice crossover there by Morno, two gone. That'll bring up Cabrera. Two run shot came in the first inning after the double by Hunter.
Miguel had his 12 game hitting streak snapped in last night's ball game. He has started a new one here tonight. Drew Smiley is all alone now, heating up in the Detroit bullpen. There's a strike called 1 1. Meanwhile, on the other end, Ryan Presley warming up. Swing and a miss. Here's the one two. They check it. Yes, he did. Two and two on Cabrera. Miguel now with four home runs, 28 RBIs. Here's the 2 2 offering. High fly ball, right center field. And caught by Parmalee, it's going to be a 1 2 3 inning. For Anthony Swarzak, Tigers go in order, seven of the books here at the ballpark. Tigers still lead 6 1. Back here at Comerica Park where the Tigers are trying to go up two games in this series. They won the opener last night leading six to one tonight as we go to the top of the eighth. We have a wall side windows pitching change and the left hander Drew Smiley is on. Hey Jim taking the uh, training wheels off regarding Smiley. He started the season as the long guy in that bullpen but he has pitched so well. You can see the numbers. And he is uh, starting to get some work late in games as he is here today. 19 strikeouts in 17 innings. Joe Maurer leads it off. It'll be Maurer, Willingham, Morno. Jim Leland gets seven innings tonight out of Justin Verlander. First pitch is low, 1 0. Six runs, 11 Detroit hits. One run, five hits for Minnesota. Mauer tonight is one for three. Smiley is 1 0. Oh. One and one. Smiley's got that fastball that will go from 89 to 93. Now that's his cutter. He can dial up to 95 on occasion with his four seam fastball. Real good breaking ball. Nice change up. Real good mound presence. 
really adapted to pitching out of the bullpen earlier this year in a game against the Yankees on April the 5th. He went four perfect innings to record a save. Tigers thought about sending Drew down to Toledo so he could continue to start after Porcello had won that number five starting job this season. But then Jim would have been going against something that he's preached since he's been Tigers manager. That's taking the best 25 guys to Detroit. Well, the team is clearly better with Porcello and Smiley on their staff. One and two on Joe Maurer. Swing and a miss, and Maurer strikes out for the second time tonight. One away. They stay with us after the Tigers for game one of the NHL playoffs. Red Wings take on the Anaheim Ducks. Coverage starts with Red Wings live. That's game one. Red Wings Ducks immediately following the conclusion of the Tigers and Twins on Fox Sports Detroit. Here's Josh Willingham. He has struck out twice tonight. One for three. Strike one. Tigers have never trailed in this game. They got two in the first, one in the second, three in the fifth. Something that the starter for Minnesota, Vance Worley, has struggled with all year. Giving up runs in the very first inning. Worley has now given up 12 runs in the first inning this year. And only six starts. Meanwhile, Cabrera, Prince, and Avila were hitting homers against Worley. It's curly fries night, right? Oh, good point. 2 1. You don't eat after 9 p.m., though, so you won't get any. Tonight. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> two and two. Smiley replacing Verlander, who threw 114 pitches in this game tonight. And the 2 2. Low 3 and 2. That one bounced in. Waiting on deck. 3 2 pitch. Yank foul. That'll rattle around the crowd. 31,748 in attendance tonight. And hopefully the weather has turned a corner. And we'll see uh, good weather from here on out. Three two pitch. Walked it. One on one out. Well, before the game tonight, the Tigers recognized over a dozen members of the law enforcement community for their service to our city, state, and region as part of a pregame ceremony. And we certainly appreciate all that they have done for us. And nice of the Tigers to uh, recognize them before the game tonight. And a nice ceremony on the field. One on one out here is Justin Morneau. Strike one. Walking a run score tonight for Morneau. Otherwise a strikeout and a flyout. Six one Tigers lead. We're in the eighth. Ball high. One ball one strike. One and two. Locating that breaking ball at 83 miles an hour in an unhittable area for both Maurer and Morneau in this inning. 
not a whole lot Morneau could do with this last pitch. Now it's two balls, two strikes. Off the plate, run it full now, three and two. Drew came on and struck out Maurer to start the inning. He has walked Willingham and fallen behind Morno. Chris Parmalee waiting his turn on deck. Lofted to shallow center field. Jackson will have to play it on one hop. It's a base hit. Morno has his first hit tonight. Now the Twins have runners at first and second. Well, you've got Parmley coming up, another left handed batter, and then you've got Pluth, who is waiting on deck. The Tigers have Albuquerque in the Detroit bullpen. Parmley on base twice in this game, single and a fielder's choice. And a strike called 0 1. There's Mr. Albuquerque. Into the glove for strike two. Parmalee two hits in the series. And he's two for seven. Willingham and Morno on the bases. As the Twins try and claw back into this one late, we're in the eighth inning. Bouncing ball right side, Infante flips to second. There's one relay, double play. Four, six, three. Inning is over. Pitcher's best friend. And take a look at his at bats before the home run. He knows the Minnesota Twins are going to pitch him away. So last night he got himself a fastball that was away, three run home run. This was into Minnesota's bullpen. First time up today, hit the ball right back up the middle. Second time he flew out. And then he knows that sooner or later they're going to try to sneak that fastball by him inside. 
and he was waiting on it. And that's what real good fastball hitters do. When you give them the pitch they're looking for in certain situations, they don't miss it. And Prince did not miss that fastball from Worley. That would be our bell tire pitch by pitch, by the way. So Fielder starts it off here in the bottom of the eighth, 6 1 in favor of Detroit. And the first pitch is a strike. Presley is the new pitcher now for Minnesota. 1 8 6 ERA for Presley. Nine and two thirds innings, seven strikeouts. He does have five walks. League hitting 237 against him. 0 oh 2. Swarzak went two and a third, gives way now to Presley here in the eighth. Tigers six runs, 11 hits. Twins one run, six hits. Breaking ball looped in the air to right field. Straight at Parmley. One out. He's going to bring up Victor. Martinez tonight. His bat waking up a little bit. Single double. Back out of play down the left field line. 0 and 1. Presley is a native of Dallas, Texas. The 0 1. Pulled fair. That's another hit for Victor Martinez. He'll take the turn but hold up with a single. He is three for four tonight. Victor was not doing this earlier in the year, but because he has much better balance these days through the swing, he's able to catch up the fastballs that are up in the zone. He just turns on this fastball, hits one right down the line. Ball hits so hard down the line, only able to get a single. Add another hit on the board for the Tigers. That'll be number 12. Martinez will depart and Don Kelly will pinch run for him. Here's Andy Dirks. Line to left. That's a base hit. Andy goes the other way. Kelly to second base. Two hit night tonight for Dirks. Four hits last couple of days for Andy. Yet another good sign for the Tigers offense. We'll bring up Johnny Peralta. Martinez, courtesy of his three hit game tonight, has moved his average from 198 to 221. Looks like he might be on his way. There's the strike called on Peralta. Johnny had a single back in the fourth. He is one for three. Ball high. One and one. Worley started, then Swarzak, and now Presley here in the eighth. Strike called on the outer edge. One and two. That's a ball high. Two balls, two strikes. Avila waiting on deck. 
Tigers got three in the fifth to lengthen their lead, making it much more comfortable. 6 1 right now for Detroit. Here's the 2 2 breaking ball. Beauty got him looking. Well, see the Tigers battle the Houston Astros May 13th through the 15th. Take advantage of the Super Spring Special. Upper box seats are half price, only $13. Call 866-66-TIGER or check it out online at tigers.com. Here's the Vila. Homer back in the second. One for three. Albuquerque still loosening in the Detroit bullpen. It's been up for a couple of innings. And the 2 0. 3 0 on Avila. This is uh, coming into tonight. The bullpen for the Twins. By and large, has been very good this year. Look at these ERAs: 0.96 for Burton, Renicky, one and a half. Perkins, their closer, his ERA is 4.15, but uh, he's converted a few set, converted a few saves. Three and zero on Avila. And he's taking it's a strike. Three and one on Alex. Should he reach? Infante would be next. Three one pitch. Strike call. Whoa. Fila looks a little befuddled at that call. Hmm. Looked up. Well, Mr. Foxtrack says it caught just a little itty bitty part of the strike zone. It nicked the strike zone. 3 2 of the runners going. Fouled off. So Kelly back to second base. Dirks back to first. Presley's given up a couple of hits in this game. And he lost it. Ball four. Tigers have loaded the bases. Just going to give Infante another opportunity. Omar tonight walking a single. Run scored as well. He said safely in seven of his last eight. He'll take and it's ball one. It's going to bring Rick Anderson out now, their pitching coach. As uh, Presley has lost sight of home plate, he is struggling to throw strikes.
Tigers have him loaded up right now. Kelly at third, Dirks at second, and Avila at first. You know what that is, right, Brad? Triple split. Nicely done. Brian Moss must be back in the house. Yes, he is. Executing the triple split. Here's the 1 0. Fly ball, right field. It's going to be straight at Pyrrhally. They'll come in a couple of steps, and the inning is over. Tigers lead and loaded, but we go to the ninth. Is made. We'll start our Stanley Cup playoffs coverage with game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals between the Wings and the Ducks. So start brewing that coffee. It's going to be a late night here on Fox Sports Detroit. Guys, back to you at the ballpark. All right, Vic, looking forward to it. Good luck to the Red Wings tonight. Out in Southern California taking on the Ducks here. The Tigers trying to put the finishing touches on game two in this series. They lead 6-1 as we go to the top of the ninth inning. 13 hits tonight for the Tigers. Justin Verlander was very good again this evening, and now the Tigers hand the baseball over to Al Albuquerque. Uh, one of the things that Jim would love to see here with Albuquerque is have a pretty good inning as far as the efficiency as the amount of pitches that he throws. Therefore, uh, Jim can use him again tomorrow if he chooses to do so. Real good numbers for Albuquerque. Look at that 21 strikeouts in 11 and two thirds, but we've well documented. Uh, the fact that the Tigers come in as a team with a lot of strikeouts. So Mr. Albuquerque done with his warm up pitches. Tigers trying to win their 15th game of the season. They came in at 14 and 10. Trevor Plouffe will start things off. Plouffe. Arcia and then Ramirez here in the Minnesota ninth inning. Only six hits tonight for the Twins. First pitch is ball one. Blue for this ball game, 0 for 3. Fly ball, ground ball, strikeout. Here's the 1 0. Inside, two balls and no strikes. Right handers have a 130 batting average against Albuquerque. Left handers not much better. 222. Well, he's gone to 3 0. There's a strike 3 and 1. Albuquerque, one of those guys that feels more comfortable throwing his breaking ball for a strike when he needs one. That was a breaking ball at 85 in a 3 0 count. Most guys in the big leagues, they're throwing you a fastball right there. Three and two. Did you see Albuquerque walk around the mound there? I thought it was strike three. Did he? Yes. No, he did. He did. 
Yeah, there's ball four. He thought he had him struck out. And to his surprise, he didn't, and then he ends up walking in. And Jim Leland not amused. Yeah, here's a two-strike pitch right here. See you later. Uh, no. Get through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Albuquerque. Lead off man on. Arcia takes ball one, and now Al struggling with the control. Seven pitches, five have missed the strike zone. You know, if we were playing Catholic League rules, 3 2 would have been a strikeout. It would have been. <laughs> There's Benoit warming up. Exactly what Jim didn't want to do here tonight. He didn't want to get anybody else up. Now a ball. Oh, my goodness. So move the runner up. Kloof will take second. 1 0 on Oswaldo Arcia. There's a strike on the outer edge. 1 1. Good firm fastball to 94. Strike called. 0 for 2 with a walk tonight for Arcia. Albuquerque has got a couple different sliders. That last slider, not his best one. The best one is down and in to the left handers. Ground ball fielded there by Prince at first base. The runner will move up. First out of the inning, one gone. He's going to bring up Wilkin Ramirez. He's had himself a nice night against the organization which he broke in with. Former Tiger, two for three, single double RBI. Ball one. Ball two. Looks like Ryan Doman has picked up a bat and moving to the on deck circle. Florimo and the number nine hitter do next. Here's the 2 0. Now it's 3 0. Thirteen total pitches thrown by Albuquerque. He has missed the strike zone with eight of those. And he fires one right down the middle. Three and one. Blue for third base. Strike called. Make it three and two on Wilkin Ramirez. He wouldn't throw him that slider here, would he? We are about to find out. Fouled off. Came in with a heater at 95. And Ramirez able to get a piece of it, staying alive. Second walk in the inning for Albuquerque. And now Jeff Jones forced to get on the phone. Probably got to go out and visit him too. It's Mike Rojas, the bullpen coach at the other end. Here comes skipper Jim Leland. Slowly making his way out to the hill. 
his hope was for a clean, quick one, two, three, ninth inning, but now Joaquin Benoit will be summoned from the bullpen. So we'll step aside. Albuquerque out. Benoit coming in. We're coming back. Fast delivery of the game, and it was Miguel Cabrera in the very first inning against the starter of the Minnesota Twins, Vance Worley, after a Tory Hunter double. A big fly to right field for Miguel, and what a start and he is off to this year. Well, the Tigers have a 6 1 lead here in the ninth. However, the Twins have runners at first and third with one out. Joaquin Benoit coming in now to try and put out the fire. I mean, Joaquin has that fastball that gets in the mid 90s himself along with a really good slider and a changeup. 13 strikeouts, six walks for Joaquin in 11 in two thirds innings logged so far in the league hitting under 200 against Benoit. So here's our first look at Ryan Domit in this series. He's been feeling a little bit under the weather, so he's not played up until now. Pinch hitting for Pedro Florimone. And Benoit throws a strike. We've been told that Domit will catch uh, the afternoon game tomorrow, which means Joe Maurer will either be the DH or he'll play first base. Maurer has one start this year at first base. Here's the 0 1. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Doman has one career hit against Benoit and it's a homer, but he's one for five. Doman also off to a slow start this year. Pretty good year last year. First year in twins uniform. Here's the 0 2. Well, one two, the count stays on Ryan Domit. Walk to Plouffe. One out later, walk to Ramirez. A balk mixed in. Albuquerque departing. Benoit coming on here in the ninth. And the 0 2. Escobar at the top of the order waiting on deck. A little bit of a, a nail biting situation here for Leland in the ninth inning, even though he leads by five. He did not want to go to Benoit here tonight, but he was forced to.
Just got a piece of that one to stay alive. 0 oh 2, the count stays on Doman. Verlander started. Smiley came on, pitched the eighth. Albuquerque started the ninth, and now Benoit. Foul away. Twins not going down tonight without a bit of a tussle. Ball high, one ball, two strikes. Sanchez will pitch tomorrow in the final game of this series. Tigers lead for Houston right after the game tomorrow. Four games set coming up against the Astros. Fouled away again. Eight pitch at bat so far for Ryan Doman. Swing and a miss, and he finally disposes of Doman. And there are two gone. Benoit has his first strikeout. One more out to get. And Domit continued to foul off all the fastballs that Joaquin was featuring. So finally on the ninth pitch of the at bat, that change up the bottom of the zone. And Doman swung and missed. Tigers pitchers have racked up ten more strikeouts here tonight. It's only a matter of time, I suppose. Verlander had eight of those. Runner going to second, and he'll, he'll get in there uncontested. Strike one on Escobar. Escobar tonight, 0 for 4. Strike away from putting this one in the victory column. 0-2 on Eduardo Escobar. Bouncing ball right side should do it. Infante, and that's a Tigers win. That's a wrap. You can enjoy the Red Wings now. No runs, two walks, two left here in the ninth. Tigers have taken the first two games in this series. Cabrera with a big homer tonight. Prince had one as well. So did Avila. And once again, our final score in this one here tonight, the Tigers beat the Minnesota Twins by a count of 6-1. to one. And after this short break, we'll join Trevor Thompson in our Call Sam Studios Red Wings playoff coverage. Coming up next, stay tuned. Wings and Ducks out of the way.